Hey everyone, Greg here from the Laser Channel. I'm fast at work editing all the video that I've been recording for the new Monport Onyx R laser machine. This is going to be a part of an entire video series on that machine, but I thought I'd take a break and throw together a few quick clips comparing the new Onyx R to the first version of the Onyx. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this sneak peek of the new Onyx R machine. When I talk about the comparison between the updated Onyx and the older version of the Onyx, this is a completely brand new machine. While it has the same black color to it and a similar shape to the machine, everything else about it is completely different. In fact, when I take a look at the height of this updated Onyx machine, I take a measurement and we're going to see that it is 10 inches exactly. When I move over to the older Onyx, we're gonna see it's a little bit shorter. The first version of the Onyx, while almost 10 inches, is actually going to come in at nine and a half inches. This older version is also going to be a little less wide. This is going to come in at about 38 and 5 sixteenths. When I come back over to the updated Onyx, this is going to be 38 and 3A. So even the width is going to be different between the two machines. And when you take a look at the inside of the machine, things are going to be vastly, vastly different. We're gonna check out the new Onyx first. The first thing that we see on the Onyx 2 is the addition of two lift shocks. When we check out the main boom or the main gantry for the laser head, we're gonna see that this is a full aluminum shroud. The laser tube is going to be located inside of this aluminum shroud. This is going to do a great job of keeping any dust off of that laser tube. When I take a look towards the right, we're gonna see down here is the power supply for the laser tube. And when we pan over to the other side, we're going to see this side has the water reservoir for cooling the laser tube. A great carryover from the Onyx 1 machine are the linear rails that move the laser head around. We find those linear rails in three different spots. A nice upgrade on the Onyx 2 machine is the absence of homing switches that are mechanical. These are all electronic and a bit more reliable and a lot more accurate. We're also going to check out the motor that shuttles the laser head back and forth. This is quite a bit taller than the previous version of the machine. And located to the far back of the machine, once again, the exhaust fan. And to the side of that, we're going to find the connection port for the rotary accessory and the switch to activate that. When we pan to the other side, we're going to see another one of those electronic homing switches. Moving to the exterior, when we take a look at the front, we're going to see that there is once again a slot for a pass-through feature. This currently is plugged with a piece of silicone. If I back up just a little bit more, we're going to see that this is the tray for emptying out all the crumbs. And inside, there's a nice tray slot for installing the honeycomb. In fact, I'll do that right now if I can try and get that in one-handed. Hey, look at that, super easy. Got the crumb tray placed back in. We're also going to see that there is a nice air gap between the bottom of the honeycomb and the crumb tray. It's very important for effective use of honeycomb to make sure there's a nice air gap underneath. Moving to the front corner of the machine, we're greeted by two buttons just like the previous version. This button, a little bit smaller, and it's trimmed with a nice silver finish. The e-stop below is mounted to the very front of the machine, and it is not recessed like the previous version. Let's check out the back side of the machine. On the back, we're greeted by the power plug port, the machine power on button, the four inch exhaust tube, and then all of our communication ports with the ethernet, the computer port, and the camera port. Absent from the Onyx 2 machine was that little jumper that I believe was over in this area, and this was a safety feature. The machine would not run without that jumper in place, and personally, I don't think it was needed. So it's nice to see on the Onyx 2, that has been deleted. 
When I go into the center, we're also going to see another silicone strip for the pass-through. This strip matches the one that we saw on the front of the machine. On the old version of the Onyx machine, we see that there's no gas lift struts. Instead, it had friction hinges in the back that worked well. I never had any problems with it. We're going to see that on the inside of the machine, the shroud over the laser tube doesn't quite cover all of the laser tube, and it's not as solid. This is bent sheet metal that has a port on the back side to allow airflow past it a little bit. And this airflow also allowed smoke residue to get on the laser tube. And again, we don't like to see smoke residue on our laser tubes. When I look to the right side of the machine, we're going to see that this is where the coolant is on the machine. And of course, on that Onyx 2 machine, this is where the high voltage power supply is for the laser tube. When I pan over to the other side of the machine, we're going to find that the machine controller is located underneath this panel. And here is the radiator for the coolant, which is a little bit odd that the reservoir is on this side, but the radiator is on that side. So the Onyx 2 is utilizing better real estate within the machine. As mentioned before, this machine does have a nice linear rail system that provides long life and precision over the course of using the machine. And I take a close up look at this motor that drives or shuttles the laser head back and forth. It's a little bit smaller motor than what we see on the newer Onyx 2 machine. When we move to the front of the machine, once again, we see that we've got the pass-through slot and the crumb tray that comes out. And here's the two buttons, this larger one on the top being nice and white. This bottom e-stop button, this is fully reset and it is flush with the front of the machine, which I actually don't like too much because I want to have my emergency stop buttons very easily accessible. This one, if I'm trying to hit it, I have to be very deliberate in hitting that. And usually when I have to hit an emergency stop button, I'm usually in a panicked situation. This is why I like the Onyx 2, where it is flush mounted to the very outside guard of the machine, making it very easy to access.